Sony officially announced a successor to the PlayStation VR recently. The currently unnamed hardware is still in development and is not going to have a release date within the calendar year of 2021. The company did not share a lot of details about the new headset, but when we look closely at how Sony has approached the PS4 and PS5, we can get a pretty good picture at what the company's next VR offering may bring to the table. Hi, I'm Ishak, and this is the Ixi Gaming Podcast. When the original PSVR launched back in 2016, it brought with it a range of reactions within the industry. While on the one hand, the product was praised for its accessibility and pricing that had a broader appeal compared to its competition, it also carried the stigma of being an experimental product from Sony, something that Sony does not particularly have a good track record with. Take a look at the PSP Go, the PS Vita TV or the PlayStation TV, other companies foray into motion games or the implementation of 3D in its games back in the PS3 era. Sony's experimental projects get a big push from the company in their infancy only to soon be abandoned if those products don't gain traction very early on. So one can be forgiven for assuming that PSVR would be one of those products back when it launched. But here we are, five years later, and the company has seen a decent amount of success with the platform and had also supported it with some great software. Speaking of great software and VR, check out our podcast on the best VR games you should be playing now. This not only covers the games in the PSVR platform, but the VR space as a whole. Coming back to Sony, from Sony's point of view, VR as a platform does not have the biggest market in the industry, and yet there is some pretty heavy competition with most, if not all, offering a better visual experience thanks to the added power they gain from borrowing resources from the PC platform. So despite selling the most number of VR headsets, Sony's plan for a successor to the original headset was always up in the air. until. A video that shows Sony researching a new pair of VR controllers in its prototype phase was out in the wild. Um, we'll get back to that video in just a bit. This was the first sign that Sony may have seen enough success to warrant a next generation VR headset. And now, a few months later, Sony has officially acknowledged its development. Over a blog post, because that's what Sony does these days, announced the existence of new hardware through interviews and blog posts on a random Tuesday. Anyway, getting back to VR, we ask the question, what can we expect from the new hardware? Before we get into what information we have from Sony, let's also look at what the competition offers that PSVR doesn't, as that would give us a good idea of what Sony would likely address in the next iteration of the headset. To list out the difference between the PSVR and every other major VR headset will churn out a laundry list of things, which, dare I say it, is obvious and something that we don't have the time for. That said, what is commonly missing from PSVR when compared to most of the VR offerings is, first and foremost, raw specs. Be it the resolution of the display or the refresh rate, the PSVR is fairly underpowered. Secondly, there is a control scheme. While PSVR does offer move controllers and peripherals like the aim controller attachment for the move controllers and also support for the DualShock 4, the competition is far more advanced with more intuitive control schemes parallel to the VR platform like individual finger tracking and even pressure detection in cases like the Valve Index. The third most common difference is the inside-out tracking system without the need of a camera setup to track player's movement and headset position. While top-of-the-line VR headsets like the Index still use an external tracking system, it did manage to do so with a minimal cluster of cables and an overall setup that can be ready in under 10 minutes, unlike the setup for PSVR. I bring up these three points as these are the ones that are most likely to be addressed. And in a way, it's these three things that set a standard within the VR space. Like with the PS5 compared to a PS4, a spec bump is the most obvious of changes one can expect with a new hardware. However, how far can Sony push it is something interesting and yet to be seen. There is no doubt that the next iteration will open doors to better visuals and as a result, better immersion. And the PS5 will play as a better, more competent hardware for VR than the PS4. 
But frankly, the more interesting things to look out for would be what type of control schemes would be employed and how Sony plans to implement its tracking system. Let's get to the controls first. And this is where Sony has the recipe for potential success already brewing. And to make sense of what I mean, let's discuss the video I mentioned earlier about the prototype VR controllers. This video demonstrates individual finger tracking with the work in progress controllers, recording different types of hand poses of various hand sizes, which results in accurate estimation of a random hand pose, enabling accurate translation of actions on screen. What I mean is any action that you perform with these controllers on in your hand is accurately represented in the VR world. The controllers, which look much like traditional VR controllers, look to be designed to implement a control scheme that borrows from the Valve Index with one-to-one -one user input and in-game actions using all fingers of both hands within the VR world. Simply put, you don't press a button to unsheath your sword anymore. These controllers will allow you to unsheath it like you would in real life, should the developer want you to do so in their games. This level of immersion is something that no console currently offers and would be fantastic if games developed for the new headset employ such gestures as controls. The video features a demo that shows assets being manipulated in real time within the VR world by real world actions with the VR controllers on. So a proof of concept for this immersive control scheme already exists, but it does not stop there. On the blog post that revealed the headset officially, Sony's Senior Vice President of Platform Planning and Management, Mr. Hideaki Nishino, also announced that, quote, One of the innovations we are excited about is our new VR controller, which will incorporate some of the key features found in the DualSense wireless controller, along with a focus on great ergonomics, end quote. So the DualSense controller's haptic feedback and adaptive triggers are most likely going to be incorporated in the new VR controller because those features make the most sense in VR. Now these features combined with accurate 3D audio would make a whole lot of difference between Sony's new hardware and other VR offerings in the market. Getting back to the previously discussed video, it also mentions that no external sensors were used to track motion which could hint at a welcome inside-out tracking system for the new headset. That said, in the same blog post that revealed the headset, Mr. Nishino also mentioned, quote, we are taking what we've learned since launching PSVR on PS4 to develop a next-gen VR system that enhances everything from resolution and field of view to tracking and input. It will connect to PS5 with a single cord to simplify setup and improve ease of use while enabling high fidelity visual experience. So it looks like it's not going to be wireless after all. Whether that is a compromise one will be willing to accept will mostly depend on the value add that would accompany the headset in terms of exclusive games and most importantly, pricing. We'll have to wait and watch how this unfolds when Sony is prepared to reveal more information. But one thing is for sure, VR games are going to look much, much better on a VR platform that is based on a console. And speaking of improved visual fidelity, check out a blog post on the graphical leap that accompanies this new generation of consoles and the new breed of graphics cards. Game graphics have come a long way since the 8-bit Mario era, but this new generation could open doors to lifelike visuals, empowering developers to tell stronger stories in the visual style they envisioned. Log on to ixigaming.com forward slash blog for this blog post. Coming back to PSVR 2, the product still has a long way to go in terms of development and Sony has not so much as decided what to name it yet. But the vision for the new headset seems on point. In an interview with GQ, PlayStation's postman Jim Ryan stated that this will be a completely new VR format for PS5 and will catch up with the technological progress that has taken place since the PSVR came to the market, which falls in line with what is mentioned in the blog post. There is no doubt that the new system will be a big improvement from the old one. Not just in specs, but ergonomics and comfort, thanks to a company that is now much more open to feedback on its products than ever before. The original PSVR, while underpowered, was the most accessible during its release thanks to its pricing and consequently was highly successful in terms of sales. And it is great to see Sony continue to focus on the platform despite it being for a niche audience. 
There are still plenty of unanswered questions though. We know that the headset would not release this year, but would 2022 be a better bet? If the new headset releases in say 2023, it would be in a predicament to play alongside a 3 year old hardware much like the original PSVR did with the PS4. While the PS5 is a great machine now, will it be powerful enough to accommodate VR games that match the visual quality of games from other VR platforms at the time? Above all, can Sony bring all these innovations and advancements and still be able to price the new headset in and around the same price bracket as the original headset? The Valve Index launched at a price of a typical gaming PC in 2019. Can Sony manage to release something similar in 2023 at the price of a typical gaming console? I guess we'll have to wait and see. So what's your take on VR? Have you played any VR games on the PSVR or any other VR headset? If so, what is your favorite game? Will there be a third generation for VR headsets some six years down the line? Sound off in the comments in whatever platform you are listening to our podcast. Ixi Gaming podcasts are available in various platforms including YouTube. So let's have a conversation going. If you have any questions regarding this or questions regarding any of the podcasts, you can ask them in the comment section or you can directly send an email to me at ishak.a at indiumsoft.com. So let's keep those discussions running and I'll meet you guys in future podcasts. Until then, I'm Ishak and this has been the Ixi Gaming Podcast. Thanks for listening. You have a great day and keep gaming.